we'll get started now, and I'll just start with some introductions of everybody. That's uh, and we'll and if and by new people come on as they come on, we'll, we'll maybe take a pause somewhere during the meeting and, and catch up with late arrival or the, yeah, introductions too. So, uh, Brent, I'm just going to call out people as I see them, and if I miss anybody, let me know. Um, so, um, uh, Brent, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone, Brent Pavia um, with the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. Maurice? Maureen Maher mm -hmm. and, oh, I'm sorry, didn't, was it, I couldn't tell if it was Maureen or Maurice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Go sorry. ahead, Maurice. Maurice Harris, I'm um, Governor Valley City Council member. Uh, Lylan, you wanna introduce yourself just briefly? I know you're going to be our speaker today, so but uh, just to introduce everybody knows that you're going to be our speaker. Why don't you just uh, just introduce yourself and uh, briefly tell us, you know, your connection to Golden Valley. My name is Wyan Rasmussen. I am the executive director of Academy of Whole Learning, and we just recently moved to Golden Valley. We um, just moved in in March, so I am very pleased to be able to give you all an overview of of what we hope to bring to this incredible community in just a few minutes. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, and I'm Maureen Maher and I work with Dr. Wyan at the Academy of Whole Learning. Cool, thank you. Kevin? Kevin Lytle with uh, PRISM, the local food shelf and thrift shop located in Golden Valley. Yeah. Betsy. Good morning, I'm Betsy Anderson. I'm with the Golden Valley Rotary Club and I'm the Communications Director at Perpich Center for Arts Education in Golden Valley. Thank you, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Novinsky. I'm the Physical Development Director at the City of Golden Valley. Katie. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I am Katie Peterson, Golden Valley resident and um, Director on the Hopkins School Board. Thank you. And see, uh, I don't have a first name. I say uh, Miss Shulquist. <laughs> well, thank you. Good morning, Sherry Shulquist. I'm the Housing and Economic Development Manager for the City of Golden Valley. New to the position, and happy to be at my second meeting with all of you, uh, like-minded business people. No, well, thank you. And Dan, Dan Goldman, Twin Realty. Uh, I own and manage investment property. Uh, and in Golden Valley, I've got uh, both uh, retail and office warehouse. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll get started. And uh, Wyland, uh, we're going to just turn it over, take it over and turn it over to you and uh, tell us about the Academy, the newest, uh, uh, a new addition to the community of Golden Valley. Oh, you're on mute. Um, thank you very much for... Uh allowing me to come in. I'm so excited to share um, what I think is just an incredible service and then to move into Golden Valley has been a dream for years. We just had to wait until we could uh, one, afford it and two, find a spot that was perfect. So we have done both of those things. So can I um, share my screen? Are you all all right if I share a presentation? Okay. All right, can you see that? Um, can, can you all see the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, it's, um, at the Academy, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, a history of it um, in a moment, but we, oops. Hold on, this is uh, skipping a bit. Oh, wow. Might not work. Went from slide two to slide six. So that's not going to work. Um, all right, I'm going to have to do something else. I'm sorry. I don't understand why it did that. I have no idea why it did that. Um, no. Wow. 
I didn't, I practiced it, honest. I just don't know why it's skipping slides. Jumping around, yeah. I can explain um, while Dr. Wine is um, perfect. the slide mm -hmm. set up. Um, does everybody know where we're located? We're right off of kind of near the intersection of 169 and 55. Um, if you turn, if you're going east on 55 and you turn one way, it's General Mills Boulevard and it takes you down to General Mills. And if you turn the other way, it's Boone Avenue and that'll take you down to 10th and our location. So we're kind of tucked back behind, um, uh, right near Lat 14, that wonderful restaurant right there. Yeah. So that's um, our new location. Yep, I'm just gonna be skipping slides three, four, and five. And um, I, I can tell what happened, Maureen. I used someone else's um, template. Someone else's, oh, okay, gotcha. And the slides that I created are not showing up. Oh, darn it. So I'll, it's always okay. so fun. Yeah, yeah. So um, I am sorry. I will just have to um, tell you about the slides that I created <laughs> so, and then work to figure it out later. And we can send out the slides probably after the, the program too. That might work. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the, the history of um, the organization. We started in 2003 and um, actually it was, uh, we were kind of a, a shoot off from Groves Academy. And in 2003, or just before that, Groves Academy had been a school for students with disabilities, any kind of disabilities. And they decided to narrow their focus and therefore um, be able to provide more expertise in the area of dyslexia and ADHD. But there were children at the school that had intellectual disabilities or autism, um, and they felt like they couldn't um, meet the needs of everyone. So in so narrowing a group of parents who were more, um, had kids with intellectual disabilities or with autism started their own school and uh, started with six kids um, back in 2003. They rented a church in St. Louis Park. They later moved to a, um, a, an old Wyzetta Elementary building in Plymouth and then to Cedar Manor um, and then we just, we just kept growing. We kept moving all the time as we were growing. Um, I started in 2012. Um, we had at that time, 15 students and five staff. And um, we were um, very, very, very lean at the time. We were located in Cedar Manor. I was active in the St. Louis Park Business Council at that time when we were located there. But as we grew and we just couldn't um, stay in that space any longer, we moved to Minnetonka. We are currently leasing space from Minnetonka Christian Academy, a Seventh-day Adventist church in Minnetonka. And while it's a beautiful space, we have now outgrown that space. So um, I, I don't believe I'm gonna be able to show you a map of where we're located, but Maureen was telling you earlier, the corner of 10th and Boone, just north of 55, we're on a 5.2 acre lot and about three acres of that is just beautiful forested um, green space uh, with a 40,000 square foot building on it. We're currently in a 20,000 square foot building. But as we began um, working with our students, we realized that students with autism, um, kind of part of their diagnosis, it's a social communication disorder they often struggle in traditional schools. Um, they don't necessarily respond to traditional education um, and they present with behaviors. And we consider behaviors any behavior. When you brush your teeth in the morning, that's a behavior. When you reach out and shake hands with somebody, that's a behavior. And so behaviors can be taught and they can be eliminated if they're maladaptive, um, but it needs to be directly taught for um, most of our students. And um, where you and I learned to smile by um, noticing that other people were smiling when we greet people, that's not necessarily something that comes naturally to um, people with autism. Once they understand the importance of greeting people with a smile, it helps people know that you're friendly, that you're receptive, that you want to be friends, then they begin greeting with a smile. So um, some of our 
kids um, come from traditional schools, I'll have, I'll have to say most of our kids do, where the other students, neurotypical, they don't realize that our kiddos just simply don't know how to make friends. They don't know how to respond. Um, they're very, very friendly children. They just haven't learned and they need to be directly taught. Um, they actually have to be directly taught how to sit at their desk sometimes and how to um, pay attention or raise their hand or not blurt out. And so, um, because of these kind of maladaptive behaviors that they don't even recognize as maladaptive, they don't do well in school, they don't make friends. And so they begin um, looking for other options. So we have incorporated into our programming um, behavior therapy. We have a, um, uh, excuse that. Um, <laughs> um, we have a, uh, clinic on site now that addresses mental and behavioral health. And um, it has grown from, um, we have 20 therapists on site now. And we work with the students in our school, but we also work with community members. We work with children as young as age two, and we work with adults up through however old adults get to be, helping people work on those, um, their mental and behavioral health. We actually received a grant this uh, spring from the Cargill Foundation um, to double the size of our clinic because our waiting list was so big um, and it grew, um, doubled and tripled over the COVID um, pandemic with kids staying home, not being able to get into school. Our school stayed open, but not all schools did. Um, and we are still working to um, meet the needs of that grant to hire therapists and bring them on. But you can see when we had uh, five staff when I started in 2012, we now have um, over 60 staff. We had um, 15 students. We now have 80 students. Um, in our new building, we'll have room for up to 125. We're excited to be able to move to be able to, to grow that to serve more people. In the clinic, we're able to serve up to 500 hours a week of therapy um, in our new place. So we um, say that we are unlocking potential. All these, all these people come with potential and we are able to um, unlock that potential. So we believe in regulation before education. And um, so sometimes that uh, is just teaching a student how to increase their attention to task. Um, we work slowly with a goal till we can get them to 30 minutes of sustained attention. If you can get a student to attend for a 30 minute segment, you can teach them anything. Um, sometimes regulation means being able to control your energy, your thoughts, your body, even your mouth. Um, and then we teach those adaptive skills while working to eliminate those maladaptive behaviors. Um, for many of our students, this takes time a lot of time. Sometimes this is all we're working on in their first year while they're here. But once they've reached that state of regulation, that magic 30 minutes, they begin learning and learning quickly. Um, success breeds success. So the earlier students can enroll, the sooner we can help them reach their regulation and academic goals. Uh, some families choose to go back into traditional education at that point, and it's fine. We'd, of course, rather they stay with us. We put the hard work in and we know them well and think we could help them more for the long term. But if a family chooses to transfer, we're all in. Um, many of the parents come, I would say the two biggest reasons parents bring children to our school is for the academic side. They feel like their child has more potential and that potential is not being met, but also friendships. So many of them are isolated and just haven't formed friendships. We hear all the time about um, when, when kids come to our school, they are invited to a birthday party for often for the first time in their lives. So we consider ourselves to have the most inclusive educational environment possible. Uh, we interpret inclusion to mean being able to participate in activities that any neurotypical kiddo could participate in their school. So our kids are the officers on student council. They have lead roles in our school plays. They play first chair in our band, have solos in our choir. 
and our sports teams through Special Olympics have won titles, have won state championships in flag football and basketball. Um, we might not get the press that other teams get when they win state championships, but I can tell you that we as parents, grandparents, administration teachers, fellow classmates, and the teams themselves, we hoop and holler and celebrate just as much as anyone when we pull out a victory in our Special Olympics teams. So many uh, um, kiddos come to us, parents, again, they're scared that their kids will never get a job. And uh, we work hard to ensure that um, this is not a reality for us. Um, this young man here, he graduated from the academy in 2018. He just graduated from Hennepin Technical College last week with an associate's degree in small engine repair. We are so proud of him. We have a student right now who graduated last year who is on a full scholarship, full four-year scholarship to the U of M Morris. And I cannot wait to see what they, they're going to change the world that that young person is for sure. Um, we, um, how we're able to do this is really through our integrated approach. I talked to you before that we have a behavior team on site. We have a behavior therapist in every classroom. And then we have that clinical service division, which is growing. Um, we started this year with an adult education program. And then we provide an enrichment um, program manager who provides it's the after school clubs for that socialization. We're teaching social skills while doing fun things after school. Our summer program is huge. Um, I was gonna um, highlight just here on this slide, our spectrum of kids and adults on the spectrum. So our school is mostly for students with um, autism, but also other neurodiversities. So we have kids with ADHD or um, epilepsy. Some have intellectual disabilities. Some, um, you know, their diagnosis would simply be, I think their parents might call it quirky, you know, no real diagnosis, just not fitting in in a traditional school. Um, but we have such a spectrum of kids. So some of our students are on the life skills track, which might mean that they have an intellectual disability that would make um, college difficult. Um, but some of our kids are gifted. I, I told you that um, we have one student who um, um, is, at the U is at Morris on a full four-year scholarship. But for our kids who take the ACT, not all of them do, not all of them are college bound, but for those that do, our average ACT score is 32. I don't believe there's another school in Minnesota that can boast of scores that high. So that gives you an idea of the quality of student that is seeking services from us. We also serve kids who will need that extra support after graduation, either in college or in employment situations. One of our graduates works a consistent 25 hours a week stocking shelves at a local cub. Um, this work is routine for him. Some might call it mundane, but he calls it knowing what I have to do. Um, so I, we are looking, um, and one of the reasons why we love moving to Golden Valley, to be honest, is for more work opportunities to teach and train our students. We have a contract with um, VRS, Vocational Rehab Services. Um, it's interesting, a lot of people go to VRS, a lot of the schools go to VRS to get their support, and they come to us to get our support. So um, they come to us, can you hire job coaches? Can you take um, young people out into the um, workforce and teach them how to do their jobs? So um, we can do that. It's a service that we offer through our adult education and then VRS pays us to do that. So if you're an employer <laughs> wondering where on earth, earth am I gonna find a workforce? Um, you might wanna contact us because we'd be happy to help you. We have, we have kids that need jobs and we have uh, employers that need workers. So it should be a, a, should be a win win. So why do we need, why does the Academy of Whole Learning exist? Well, one in 42 children in Minnesota has autism. We are one of the highest prevalent states in the nation. Um, now, I don't believe this is because Minnesota um, 
causes more autism. I honestly believe it's because Minnesota has more autism services and attracts people. We have um, families that have moved for our school from uh, at least 30 states um, and um, a couple of countries. They relocate to have their children come to our school or be serviced in our clinic. We have one family that's here from Egypt and the dad has been telling us about every six months, he's like, I, I miss my son so bad. He's living here with his grandmother. I, I've got to bring him back. And then he told us just recently, I don't know if I can, I am now considering me myself moving my business to um, Golden Valley, Minnesota, because I can't take my son out of your program. He's making too much progress. Um, the, nat the national prevalence rate um, in the US is one in 55. So you can see considerably more um, in Minnesota. Um, hmm. One in five Minnesotans face mental illness each year. So excuse this piece. It's reminding me to not get caught in my, uh, tend to look at the computer a lot. Um, and so we have, um, our psychotherapists right on site to work with our students. They're working with our parents. They're working with our siblings, um, but they're also working with community members that need supports. It has been, it's long been a desire of ours to be able to serve the whole community. Um, we are a private school. Our tuition is quite high. It ranks up there with um, Groves and Blake and Breck, but we have an incredible donor base that helps provide incredible scholarships for our students. And this has been happening now, um, this is, we started in 2003, but about 2016 was about the point where we tipped and um, donors began recognizing that we were a worthwhile uh, investment into the community. And we now are able to um, offer you know, about $350,000 in scholarships a year. And this is because of our incredible donor base. 85% um, of adults with autism are unemployed. And um, so that's that yellow part there. Our students who will become young adults and have become adults are in that blue. That We do not have a single alumni from our school who is either not employed or in college right now. Not one, we have not one that's, that's not actively engaged in their future. Um, high school graduation rates for students with disability is roughly 20% lower than from others. So we really, um, uh, all of our students graduate. We do, however, allow students to stay beyond age 18. If they have not quite finished their um, requirements, graduation requirements, they can stay a little longer. And we now have an adult education program as well. Um, uh, so you would finish your education units within the school, but you can get that support through our adult education. Um, we provide, that's where we have a couple of students going to college that are getting support through our adult education program, just helping them with their um, homework, sitting down, getting it done, turning it in, teaching those skills. They put in the work, they might as well get credit for it, but sometimes their executive functioning is tough um, or finding jobs. So this is a story from um, one of our students who is now a junior. His parents, um, this is his dad telling this story. Their family was truly in crisis when they found our school. Their son has autism and um, mental health concerns. And uh, he is definitely one of our, well, we all, we have so many success stories, but he um, thrives. He says this um, young man's name is Owen, and Owen says he wakes up in the morning and he cannot wait to come to school. Um, so we did know that in order to keep growing, we needed to um, um, have a, a bigger, better plan space. We have been looking for somewhere for over three years. We have looked at over 50 different places. And our first choice all along was Golden Valley. Um, we would have settled for somewhere within the Western suburbs within the 694, 494 ring. Um, we want to be closer to services for the students that we wanna make it easier for um, kiddos to be able to get to us as well. 
So the solution was to um, have our own building. And we do now, we purchased this building. You can almost see here how on um, the left side, there's a, it's a, a building when there's a small connector and on the right side, there's a, a building. Um, on that right side, which you can see more fully here, that will be our school. So that will be um, K through 12, the school. And then on the left side, the bottom will be our mental and behavioral and rehabilitation therapy side, our clinical side, and upstairs will be our administration side. And what you can't see on here because we don't yet have it is a gym. After we purchased the property um, and we knew, so we raised money to buy the property, we own this free and clear. And I can tell you that as a nonprofit, we did not have the funds to do that, but we had enough supporters in the community that came alongside and purchased the building for us. So we own it, no mortgage, um, but we have to raise the money to do the renovations inside. And we are still working on that. But someone came along and said, you can't have a school without a gym. So we've had a gym donated and that will be um, here too. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. As far as our um, timeline for what we're doing, you can see we are um, at the very, <laughs> Left-hand side of this timeline, we are working hard, meeting with our architects two and three times a day. And I, I, I just wanna give a shout out to the city of Golden Valley who has been um, so cooperative. We were working with some architects that um, in our mind weren't going at the pace we needed in order to be able to open in September of 2022, which is huge, we, we have to. Our, our, We've already given notice at our other place and we can't go back on that. Um, so we just recently changed architects. And so the city of Golden Valley has had to jump with us and had to be flexible with us. And I just, um, if any of you are on this call, this, it, it has been an incredible partnership and I want to say thank you. Um, our architects, our new architects, it's SRA has, um, uh, they can't say enough about the city. We are working with Zeman Construction, another Golden Valley business. They happen to be right next door to us, um, who have been another fabulous partner. And so we are, we are working hard to um, get back on track. And we would like to be able to break ground in October um, for the new gym and um, have that kind of enclosed before winter hits and then do most of the renovations inside um, through June and then be able to um, open that. Uh, ideally, we'd be able to offer our summer programming next summer. Um, let me see. So um, um, I do wanna tell you about one event that we have coming up. We have um, on August 22nd, and Maureen might jump in and share a little bit more. She's on the event planning side a little bit more than I am. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to have a sensory friendly event that we want to become an annual event. Now that we own property, now that we can um, kind of do what we want on our property. Um, this is an event, sensory friendly events are for those people that have sensory processing difficulties. These are very, very popular in some of the larger cities in the world like Toronto, Amsterdam, um, this is of course before COVID, um, New York has one, but they're very few and far between. And we think that the Minneapolis Twin Cities area um, with our high prevalence of kiddos with autism um, would highly benefit from a community event, bringing the whole community together. I can tell you that having a child with a disability, especially with autism um, is isolating. You can't take your child, they might have a meltdown, might trigger from all the noise. So we want to have a sensory friendly event out on our, what we call the Savannah, um, this, this incredible acreage we have here. Um, we'll have food trucks and um, brewery trucks, and we're going to have a silent disco. And if you've never seen a silent disco, it is something to behold. Um, everyone is wearing um, earbuds and they have their own music and they make the music as loud or soft as they want. Um, they can pick the type of music that they like. Um, this may be the only dance event in the world where 
I might look like I know how to dance because no one will know if I'm on the beat or not. Um, um, but we are also going to have some acoustic um, uh, musical artists coming. I think we have some well-known musical artists that we are um, can't speak for them yet, but we hope to be able to do that. Um, we will have McPhail um, is bringing some music therapy in. But we see this as a, a small event this year as it will be the first one, but we really think that it will grow and it will be a kind of a boom for Golden Valley to bring in people from all over the Twin Cities to this huge sensory friendly event for, um, it's for children of all ages, but for um, a safe place for parents to bring their kids. You won't have to just come to our school. Um, so we would love to um, know from you if if you know of um, breweries or food trucks that would be good to come, sponsorships um, will exist for this event. So, um, and again, we think it's going to become a huge hit in the Twin Cities. Um, next year, we'll have a gym and we'll be able to use that space as well, so internal space. Um, but I didn't want to not say that. You'll hear more from us and hopefully you'll see more in the media about that sensory friendly event. We hope to hit the airways big with that. But um, with that, that's the end of my presentation. Do you have any questions? Yeah, thank you. Any questions? Anybody? Um, I am here and Maureen too. We are both located in the Golden Valley building right now. If anybody would like a tour and right now honestly you have to have a good imagination when you walk through the building um but I, uh, both maureen and i can just see the future here right now mm. um, we yeah. would love to give you um a walk through you can come walk through our savannah we hope to make that um, a beautiful park um so um, so excited to be a part of golden valley really it's been a dream for years so, um, well, we definitely have to, um, you know, uh, as you progress in Golden Valley, we're going to have to have an update down the road here mm -hmm. um, and I definitely keep in touch as this is growing and welcome to Golden Valley. Mm -hmm. And thank you for presenting, Wylin, and thank you, Maureen, for uh, attending. And I hope we can stay in touch and you know, we meet on the fourth Thursday and hopefully um, we'll have to discuss this on the agenda. But when we start meeting in person, it'd be great to start networking and getting, um, you know, maybe uh, updates as things go on in our regular meeting process. Because um, as you can see on our agenda, we do school district updates. And uh, so it's an interesting addition to have another school in Golden Valley. I mean, mm -hmm. Golden Valley has become quite the educational center in a sense. It's got mm -hmm. the Perfect Center, two wonderful school districts, and now your organization. So it's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty powerful. Um, how about a city update? And Gary, I just sure, wanted to, a question? I just wanted to quickly mention that um, that we are having Academy of Whole Learning as a Rotary speaker, I believe in July or August. I think it's, it's August. It was August third or tenth. I don't know if the date's been set yet. This summer. Yeah. So um, you're everyone is more than welcome to join us for that Tuesday presentation, and there might be more of an update in a couple of months. Right. Uh, right. We also will have a grand opening. And of course, all of you will be invited to that as well. So you'll get to see the finished product. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a question, if you don't mind. Um, I might have come sure. in a little bit late and I may have missed this, but I'm just curious as to um, how you found Golden Valley and decided that that was the place to be. What, a, what were the criteria you were looking, using? Uh, well, we had several criteria um, that we were looking for in just a building in general. So we wanted a green space. We needed it to be a large enough building to hold all of our programming. Um, we needed parking that would hold our, like we have, um, we, we would go through K through 12. So we have a number of students who drive, plus we'll have, when we're full, we'll have 70 staff. So there was some basics. We also wanted to be at a minimum in the western suburbs of the um, 494, 694 um, ring. We wanted to be in, um, but we narrowed it down and we had a rubric. And so the further in we could get, the further east we could get in the western suburbs, the higher number, um, the further centralized we could get in um, as far as north-south, the um, 
the higher number. And so Golden Valley was a five um, on our, um, for some of those reasons. We also um, began meeting with um, the I don't know if it's planning departments of some of the cities while we were yet looking. And um, so we met with the city of Golden Valley. We met with a couple other cities and I don't have to name them at this point. Um, Golden Valley from the very beginning, just the people in the city of Golden Valley thought, this is great. We want you here. This is fabulous. We'll, we'll work with you. We'll help you. Um, so that just kind of confirmed our decision um, as well. Um, and I can't, and we, like I said, we looked at over 50 properties. Most of them were industrial in nature. Even those in Golden Valley, we we're like, we're going to have to tear up um, parking lot to turn into green space. And uh, when this building came along, I was ready to empty my retirement fund. If that's what it took to, to get it, it was <laughs> ideal. Wow. What a great lead in for the city uh, on the <laughs> next on the agenda. Right. <laughs> uh, Maurice, Mark, do you have an update for us? I mean, with all those kudos, that's great to hear uh, that the Golden Valley City team has been uh, so supportive for businesses. Good to hear. Love it. I love it. Um, first, I want to just welcome um, Dr. Rasmussen and um, Kevin Hole, Hole Learning to Golden Valley. Um, I remember when we reviewed the application and approved at City Council. It feels like a generation ago. It's probably like maybe three or four months ago. Who knows? <laughs> Um, we're, you know, we really loved what you guys are doing and the presentation kind of confirms, you know, what value added to the city. And again, as Gary said, add to our plethora of ed educational opportunities. So just thank you for choosing us <laughs> and great to hear our city staff. We love them. They work hard. They do a great job and help provide, you know, that extra level of service. So thank you again for choosing us and we're happy to have you. So it's on to my updates. Um, it's a pretty busy month, so to say. Um, going through my list real quick. Um, one, we approved of a energy action plan for Golden Valley. I'm working with um, Excel Energy, and we had a, our task force that worked with them and creating the plan. I think it's on the website. It's a very detailed plan, really good stuff on how to reduce our carbon footprint, how to be more energy efficient um, through you know, residential, commercial, industrial properties as well, um, kind of sets us up, up on the right foot to kind of continue that work um, that we started so long ago. And so I was really excited to see that next step take hold. Uh, I think we also approved of MOU as well to help work with, with Excel Energy on that as well. So um, that, that was for earlier this month. Um, we added a, a emergency management uh, section to our city code, um, as you know, the last year and a half. We had our share of emergencies, um, be a pandemic or otherwise. And so just having some actual language in the city code to kind of help with organization and also with just procedure to make sure we're not kind of just flying by the seat of our pants. So that was approved of um, and put in the city code and the ordinance was about to have that published as well. Um, we're currently working on our re website redesign. Um, we think approved a contract last week's meeting um, working with a great organization out of maybe Texas, um, or that's where a person talked to us from Texas. But we're going to update the website. It's been a long time coming. Um, and so that work will continue throughout um, the summer. And I hopefully, and Mark, correct me wrong, you know, hopefully by fall, late fall, we should have a release of that website. So I'm sure we're going to try to get input from um, our staff council, but probably also for residents as well to make sure that it, you know, ensure that it works and it works for everyone um, to make sure it's more, you know, accessible and easier to navigate than our current website, which it's, it's out of date <laughs> for that as well. Um, also, we're working on combining the Rising Ties Task Force and our Human Rights Commission to a new, a new commission. Um, Rising Ties Task Force was created to kind of help um, give input on equity, diversity, um, to city programming and city, you know, operations. That's kind of ran the end of its course, been around for a couple of years now. And so we're going to try and continue that work via a new commission that kind of will focus on, you know, those type of issues as well as human rights currently. Um, human Rights Commission's last meeting was actually on Tuesday. Um, once 
Um, the new commission is set up, I think it's next month or two. Um, they could start to go at some work and continue to expand on what they're doing. So it's really exciting just kind of codifying and just kind of building in those issues we're working on as a city um, and continue that work as a better commission set up as well. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think with my checklist of things I wrote down here. Um, also, I know, and Mark may want to expound on that, but facility studies engagement over the last month, the game we're input on that process um, as we're continuing that work, as well as the downtown, um, downtown study work as well. Um, I know this past month they had engagement via surveys. Mark probably expound that more than I kind of was pulled down. Um, as well, as well as police task force had a session earlier this month as well, getting input on the work they've been working on, getting public input on, you know, next steps as well. And say that is it. Mark, you want to add on to anything I said or anything I may have forgot off my list? That, that was a long list, uh, council member. That was that was great. Maybe just a couple quick uh, things to add um, in addition to the. Uh, Partners in Energy program. We are also uh, working with Hennepin County. Well, Hennepin County is mandating uh, organics recycling curbside. Uh, so we have uh, developed a plan working with our environmental commission and approved by the city council. We uh, will should be bringing a contract to council uh, in the next month or so, and then going into a whole lot of education within the community about organics recycling. So those of you that live in Golden Valley uh, should probably look for uh, more information coming on, on organics uh, collection. Um, and then uh, I would, would add that Sherry's been working hard with our, uh, our landlords or getting ready to work with a lot of our landlords as we kind of ramp um, our engagement there, particularly through our STAR program that will be coming up soon and council will be hearing more about that in the next month or so. And then uh, finally, some uh, some exciting news. Um, we will uh, be fully open come July uh, at City Hall. So a um, little, little change for us and how we operate, but that is our overall game plan. So. And also, I forgot the mask mandate. I know, as you may have not known, it's been expired on a state level. Same with the city. Um, businesses can continue to have a mask mandate if they choose to. Um, I think at this point, it's just respect. <laughs> um, you know, people choose to wear masks. That is their choice um, as well. So we've been very kind of put that message out there where it may be expired, but business still have, a, have the right to do so. Um, just respect people's choices on wearing a mask. So, um, yeah, it's been a busy month. Um, let's look forward to reopening soon. Um, and hopefully it's a smooth and easy process for a city and for our residents. Great. Well, thank you for the update, gentlemen. Um, it's time for our school updates and I don't know if anybody's got a scheduling or needs to go first. Um, who wants to go first? We'll throw it up in the air. Go for it, Katie. <laughs> Katie, go for it. <laughs> All right, I'll go for it. Um, so although it feels like a really, really crazy busy time um, at Hopkins School District right now, I was kind of trying to come up with my update and it felt a little light. So I think it's mostly um, hectic and crazy, but not necessarily um, groundbreaking. We um, had our big retiree honoring ceremony this week um, and we actually were honoring 1,022 hours of service to the district, which was, I mean, kind of mind blowing to me. Um, and that was really fun that we were able to do a drive through and honor them this year, which we weren't able to do last year. Um, we do have graduation and prom coming up next week. They will be actually on the same day. Um, and I think that we should be very thankful as residents of Golden Valley that the Hopkins High School is not in Golden Valley because prom is outside in the high school parking lot and all of the residents around the high school got a notice from the city of Minnetonka about a, the noise ordinance being willfully broken. Um, <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. We're doing two, um, two graduation ceremonies actually at Mariucci Arena um, 
shockingly, it's less expensive for us to go rent Mariucci Arena right now than it is to deck out Lindbergh Center with everything we needed to do graduation there. So being fiscally responsible, we're headed down to Mariucci for a 10 a.m. and a 1 p.m. ceremony to honor our 2021 graduates. Um, on the Golden Valley front, um, I think one the, the one really major thing that continually pops up with the Hopkins buildings here in Golden Valley is traffic concerns. Um, so on that front, a couple of things of note. Number one, um, as a school district, we have opted in um, or we've went into a contract with a new transportation company. So we're going to be working with a new busing company called Lake Country Transportation. Um, we're really excited about this um, about this contract. They're committed to um, a lot of things that align with us, but first and foremost, committed to building out a transportation program for Hopkins that really meets the needs of our families. And so one of the really tough things has been getting drivers. Um, they pay a higher wage to their drivers, um, about $2 an hour more. So we're really hopeful we get really high quality drivers, um, as well as um, figuring out ways to create a busing schedule that works for our families here in Golden Valley to really reduce that drop off and pick up. Um, I know it's a, it's a pain in the butt for parents. It's a pain in the butt for community members. It's a pain in the butt for the school. And so we're really hopeful that um, this new busing company can help us address a lot of those issues that we have with traffic around Meadowbrook Elementary. And ideally will allow us to use the Boy Scout building um, in a way that benefits the district and the community in a much you know, better way than sitting empty. And so those are some things we've been talking about as we add this new transportation company. There'll be work being done this summer at the Meadowbrook parking lot to really um, go through, um, make sure the traffic flow fits better. Right now it's this, if you guys have seen it, it's a bit piecemeal, if you will. Um, so all of those things are kind of being discussed right now. And then, you know, overall, we're just in a big shift towards our summer programming. Um, we are cautiously optimistic. We'll get close to pre-COVID numbers. I know our community ed department needs this revenue, needs these programs to be successful. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll be heading that off and Meadowbrook will be a site for summer kids and company. So you'll see kiddos running around, um, all summer long again. I think that's pretty much everything, unless anyone has any questions. Great update. Betsy. Thank you. And my kiddo will be one of those kiddos running around at Meadowbrook this summer. <laughs> so thank you, <laughs> Hopkins Public Schools. Um, from a Purpich, uh, an update, um, it's, it's a big week for Purpich Arts High School. It's our last week of school. Our students will graduate tomorrow. Uh, we have three three ceremonies planned. Um, so if you want to say a prayer for me tomorrow, please do, I'll, I will gladly accept it. Um, the reason we're doing three ceremonies is because we will be on campus to have our graduation ceremony. Um, we typically have our ceremony at Ted Mann at the University of Minnesota. They're actually under construction. So even without a pandemic, we wouldn't be at Ted Mann. Um, but this whole school year, we've had our student body split into thirds. So at any given time, one third of our students have been on campus and two thirds have been in distance learning. They will graduate tomorrow in those same cohorts so that we can keep the numbers of, of graduates low in the building, but also allow for uh, family and friends for the, of those graduates to be able to be there at the ceremony. Um, to see that and, and keep uh, in line with, uh, with occupancy numbers. Um, in addition to those three ceremonies, they will also be live streamed on our Facebook page, hence the need for prayers. Um, and um, our students will immediately post graduation uh, have their prom. Uh, it's very typical for schools this year to push prom as far back in the school year as possible. That was a recommendation from the state health department, uh, knowing that prom ceremonies could potentially be spreader <laughs> events and not wanting that, that event to then impact a graduation experience. So our students will actually have their, um, have their graduation on campus and then their prom is on the Jonathan, one of the Jonathan Paddleford boats um, over off of Lake Harriet. No, Harriet Island, I knew that wasn't right. Um, so that's our, that's our plan for tomorrow. Um, so excitement at, on campus for sure. And then throughout the summer, we will, can, we will be having a, you know, multiple um, 
professional development opportunities for arts educators in the areas of dance, music, theater, and visual and media arts. Our professional development staff does not take the summer off. They, this is actually one of their busiest times of the year because um, so many arts educators are seeking those opportunities and they quite honestly they need them for licensure to have those continuing education units so uh, purpose is a, is a huge provider of free opportunities to earn those ceus and um, those events will be both virtual and potentially on campus as we're um, getting the, the opportunity to open up for more of those educators to come on campus so that's my purpose update great Great update. Any questions for the schools? I don't think we have anybody from Robbinsdale, do we? I think we no. might be in transition with Robbinsdale. We'll, yeah. we'll need to seek a new representative from their district. Yeah. So why don't we go with um, a rotary update? Could you roll into that for us, Betsy? I can. I'm switching hats. Uh, rotary update. We're very excited to announce that starting next Tuesday, June 1st, we will be meeting back in person at Brookview. Uh, for the first time in over a year, <laughs> we're barely recognize each other. So we're very excited about that. We've we've had the opportunity to meet virtually every um, every week throughout the pandemic, but it just doesn't compare to being in person. So we're very excited about that. That'll be next Tuesday, June first. We are, uh, as always, um, welcome to guests. You are more than welcome to join us if you would like. We will meet at twelve fifteen at Brookview second floor. I think we're still going to be on the second floor. I should probably, I'll find out when I get to the building. <laughs> it's not that big. We won't get lost. Um, and the, the meeting is, is an hour. So it's an hour midday on Tuesdays. Um, our full rotary schedule, speaker schedule is on our website, goldenvalleyrotary.org. And we just did highway cleanup for the 20, is our, it was the 25th, or, yeah, 25th year of highway cleanup from the Golden Valley Rotary, so that was nice. We did a little story in the Sun Post about that. Um, I don't know, what else, Gary? Oh, mm, great. One, more, one more quick thing. Um, annually, we give away five scholarships to graduating seniors, two students from Hopkins High School, two students from Robbinsdale Armstrong, and one student from Perpich Arts High School. So those, um, I, some of them have been announced, some of them haven't, so I'm not gonna say the names but we will honor those students at our, um, our annual awards lunch. And the Rotary year goes uh, July 1 to June 30th. So at the end of June, we will have our big end of year celebration. We'll pass the gavel of the president and be able to honor those students as well. Great, great report. Uh, Brent, how about a chamber update? Yeah, thank you, Gary. Uh, a lot of things going on, busy time <laughs> as usual. Um, I'll start on the policy advocacy side since kind of uh, what's new, we're in overtime session at the legislature. Um, the, it should be a no surprise, uh, kind of the, some of the things that we've been working on and um, uh, one of them, I mean, likely to uh, has been uh, uh, approved and will go forward on PPP uh, tax conformity. Um, we've strongly supported securing uh, more relief for businesses impacted by the pandemic and, and social unrest um, and additional in investment in transportation and transit. Um, we'll see how that all plays out in the you know final outcome. Had a um, opportunity to get together with the suburban uh, city managers last week, including uh, Golden Valleys uh, and um, very productive in terms of, of understanding common concerns, unique concerns and alignment. Um, and so, you know, that, uh, that, that will continue to build out as a legacy from uh, Twin West days. We also, um, I, I mentioned before uh, on the kind of strategic work that we've been doing on the economic and community development front, um, one of the things that came up really particularly from the city level is uh, commercial development and redevelopment, especially around affordability and the heavy lift and alignment that has to go along regionally for there for, for that. Uh, the chamber pl plays a critical role. Um, and so we've been having a lot of those conversations. Um, Hopkins in particular, um, small, in terms of uh, geographic size, but that uh, Blake Road station area is, uh, is key for that 
developmental con development concern. Um, on the on the programming side, I talked to, I was talking to Gary before we got started on this council meeting. There's a, um, uh, you know, we're we're kind of working that I think interim hybrid model. You'll see some things that are in person with the ability to log in. I think it'll be like that throughout the summer. Of course, we have golf tournaments coming about. Um, and so those obviously will be in person. I think it'll be the fall that we'll really kind of understand the new normal for that programming side. But in the meantime, um, next early next month, um, we have a, a, a hybrid kind of meet the chamber, chamber 101 in Plymouth. We'll have uh, an introduction to um, Elevate Futures, that career development platform that many of you are aware of that works with schools and, um, and employers. We will, um, uh, the Elevate, not to overuse the term, but Elevate Business Hennepin County has been extended. That's gonna go through March of uh, 2022. So opportunity for more uh, businesses to get uh, assistance through that programming. Um, and then we have a, a congressional update from Dean Phillips uh, in June. Uh, so. A lot of, lot of things going on. Um, if any of you want visits from the chamber or me in particular to, to businesses or anybody on the call, just let me know, happy to arrange that. Okay, thank you, Brent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're going to adjourn and I wanna talk about uh, next month's meeting. It's scheduled for Thursday, March 24th, 8.30, 9.30. I'm going to just take an educated guess that we should maybe still keep it as a Zoom only because I don't have any space secured like we used to have at, at, uh, at the Brookdale Community Center. And we need to get that done before we start talking about going live. We've got to figure out that space is available. But I think it'd be at some point in time, we're going to have to do that sooner than later. I don't know if it's by next fall, but I want everybody to give that a thought. We'll discuss it further at our next meeting, and we'll also see Hopefully between now and then we'll be able to figure it out and see if we got space. We really had a great facility there before uh, COVID and it would be great to get back together again. And I'd really love to get that uh, that, that allocation done. Yeah, Gary, this is paper. Mark Mark at Golden Valley. We actually talked about uh, this yesterday in our management team meeting and uh, Rick Berno, our park and rec director who uh, manages uh, Brookview uh, is uh, anticipating your return, was just asking kind of about uh, dates and times. And uh, so we definitely have space uh, available and would be uh, thrilled to, to host this group at, at Brookview again. Um, so maybe just uh, talking about specific details, what day, what time, um, and, and then uh, we'll circle back with, uh, with Mr. Berno. But um, perhaps that's a conversation. I'm happy to jump in if you and, and uh, Brent Great. want want to have that uh, Excellent. conversation offline. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate the support. Because we'll, it, it, so basically, you'll be notified whether it's going to be in person in Zoom, but we're going to have to work out the details and make sure that we've got, uh, uh, I guess, our, our I's dotted and our T's crossed to make sure that we can transition uh, comfortably. And then if anybody's got any um, input on that, like, you know, they, they prefer one thing or another, please just uh, share uh, and by email, and we'll be happy to, uh, you know, take anybody's opinion uh, because we do want to do this in a way that everybody's comfortable. Well, and, and Gary, it may be possible to to uh, do this uh, as a hybrid meeting where some some of us are in person and others of us are are meeting via Zoom. So um, definitely, that'd be uh, great. Okay, conversation we can have. Okay, exactly. We can work on that too. Okay, everybody. I guess uh, it's time to adjourn. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, welcome to the new folks and uh, uh, welcome to the Academy of Learning to being a new business in Golden Valley. And I wanna thank everybody for attending. Uh, it was great, great reports and I'll see everybody in a month. One way hey, or the everyone. other. Bye, Bye now. Yeah. Have a good day. Bye now. <laughs>